and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show all about amazing truths and big fat lies. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a man who has broadcasting in his blood, along with Sanatogen, cod liver oil and Viagra. It's Sir Terry Wogan! And David Mitchell's writing partner, acting partner and friend, his confidant, his soulmate, his lover. It's Robert Webb! And joining Lee Mack this week, we have a 24-year-old who's one of the youngest comedians in England and one of the oldest men in Scotland. <laughs> it's Kevin Bridges! And an actress whose credits include Torchwood, where she had to confront all manner of hideous creatures, and Not Going Out, where she had to confront <coughs> Lee. It's Katie Wicks! So, we start with the round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them, and to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the tosh. And Terry is first up, so Terry, would you reveal all, please? I deliberately set fire to my colleague's script whilst they were live on air. <laughs> Mm. Was was this a... Uh, did you say colleagues, as in, this, this happened a lot? Or the script belonging to one colleague? I used to do it on a regular basis. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> enough of your sex life, Terry. <laughs> you flatter me. <laughs> Is there footage of this, if it was live? It's sex life, I hope not. <laughs> uh, no, there's no footage. It was in Ireland, on Irish radio. And it was just a little prank of mine. To, while my colleagues were reading the news or announcements, I would sneak in behind them and set fire to the script <laughs> from the bottom. So, so they, would, they would be holding these scripts in their hand? As it disappeared in front of them. And this is the news? Often the news and sometimes a Beethoven concert. I, I was indiscriminate. <laughs> Do you use matches? Because you'd hear the sound, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course, but I struck the matches before I came into the studio. I'm a swift mover. <laughs> but you Safety can't... matches. You can't move too swiftly with a match because it goes out. Look, that's, that's what your jacket is for. You keep it in there, <laughs> sneak in, they don't see you, you smile. <laughs> How did your victims react, Terry? I was the senior man, and uh, I took no nonsense. If they didn't like it, too bad. <laughs> Hang on, Terry, sorry. What year was this? Just after the Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about 21. Would the listeners ever get wind of the blaze? No, because th there's, there's no chance of any scent on the radio. But what I... <laughs> Um, so we think, what do we think? Kevin? I don't know, I think it would be common now. OK, <coughs> Kevin thinks it's a lie. Yeah, I agree, I think we'd already know about this. OK, so I think it's a lie. we'll go for lie. You're saying that it's a lie. Terry Wogan, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Oh. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Uh, Terry did deliberately set fire to his colleague's script whilst they were live on air. Uh, at least they can laugh about it now. They can't move their hands, but they can laugh. <laughs> it was a prank. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're next. I once found a suitcase and took it to the police station. When they opened it, it contained 34 bunches of bananas. <laughs> Uh, where did you find the suitcase? At a train station. Um, well, there are lots of... Do you want a specific train station? Well, no, I'm just sort of thinking that you, you're in a train station, you see a suitcase, you think, I must take that to the police. Uh, that's, uh, that's potentially a, a bad approach. No, I was just lying, and I'd say to a couple of people, is that your suitcase? And it was in the climate of fear, and I started to think, well, maybe I should be a good citizen. So I took the suitcase over, and I headed straight to a traffic British transport police guy and told them what had happened. So you, you moved the suitcase you thought might be a bomb? <laughs> yeah. Did you also, yeah. you also give it a good rattle? <laughs> 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 
I wasn't so much I thought it was a bomb, I just thought maybe somebody had left a suitcase. Well, that wouldn't be a response to the climate of fear, though. That would have been a response oh, to the climate of forgetfulness. I can panic. I panic. <laughs> <laughs> Who opened the suitcase to divulge well, all those bananas? I came in, and the British transport police guy took it into his office, and then they scanned it with some... whatever they scanned it with, some... Those things. <laughs> <laughs> I get weight <laughs> rose. <laughs> <laughs> Part of this is why would anybody put 34 <laughs> bunches of bananas into a suitcase? That's exactly what the chief terror inspector said. He was baffled. That's why. <laughs> Did they ever find this guy? Was I never kept you know. up to date. I don't have a clue. I just left it. You haven't kept I, in touch. No. You... Well, he's here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of the swingers. <laughs> What I doubt here is that, is that if you've taken a piece of unattended luggage to the police, I don't think they're going to then immediately open it. Oh, well, or it was no longer unattended when I got to the police. No, I but you're, you're, <laughs> but you're saying, but that's not going to reassure them because you're saying I've no idea whether or not this has got a bomb in it. So I never use those words. You don't, you don't use the word bomb in this situation. I just do you do a mime. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried this might be. A... What? <laughs> Right, we need a decision. Truth or lie? Well, it's, you think it's a lie? I do, really. Yeah, I think it's a lie. Well, we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie. OK, uh, Kevin, were you telling the truth? Eh, uh, it's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, it was a very big lie. Kevin didn't take a suitcase containing 34 bunches of bananas to a police station. Uh, next up, Robert Webb. As a child, I had so many imaginary friends, we formed an imaginary gang. <laughs> right. did, they, did the gang have a name? Yes, the gang were called the Guy Bys. The what? <laughs> the Guy Bys? They were called the Guy Bys. How are you spelling that? I never had course to spell it. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know... If you had to spell it now, how would you spell G it? G-Y <laughs> hyphen <Yeah>. by B-B-I-E-S. <laughs> how many were, were in the gang? There were, there were quite a few. There were 12. <laughs> the same number as apostles. Well, <laughs> it, does, and you, it does occur to me that this was a harmless little messiah complex. Right. <laughs> so did you appoint yourself head of the imaginary... Yeah, I was basically okay. Jesus. <laughs> Do you still keep in touch with the rest of the gang? <laughs> they, they, were, they were imaginary friends, so they sort of disappeared as soon as I stopped thinking about them. <laughs> what, uh, did you have names for the guy buys? They, I think I, used, I borrowed names from people I knew at school and my brother. They were like Mark and Andrew and all the apostles. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> They were, uh, yeah, and Chris. Judas. <laughs> Chris, Chris isn't. Chris, and one. obviously Judas Iscariot. Yes. <laughs> Did you have a, a favourite guy by? <laughs> Chris was good. <laughs> Did you have a rival gang, the guy by? Was there a feud? Like well, there was always the. Our, our main enemy was the Joker, um, which I think, <laughs> I think I borrowed Justice. from Batman. <laughs> What would he do, the Joker? Oh, just, you know, rob banks and stuff, and, and we would, um, you know, we'd chase him on our bike. All 12 or 13. I mean, they were very good at getting on the back of the bike. Yeah. You were like a, a red cross chopper. display team, weren't you? Or they were. They sort of, I sort of imagine them sort of diagonally stacked. <laughs> Did you all sleep in one bed? Oh, I, they, they weren't really... I mean, they, Into this, it. This is Never. pretty... <laughs> As much as I encourage the gay boys, the guy boys. <laughs> no, they, it, they were very much a pre-sexual phenomenon. Have we, have we established it why they were actually called the guy boys? No, it's just a sort of sound that children make. Well, that this child made. <laughs> well, he, see, the thing is, guy boys sounds like baby talk. You know, it might be like and just some words that you formulated. Cause, but, mm. but, but you also were aware of Marvel comic enemies at that Batman age. wasn't a Marvel character. Batman yeah. wasn't Marvel? No, no. it was Marvel's Spider-Man, Captain America, the Hulk. 
Superman was Action Comics. I hate him when he does that Stephen Fry thing, don't you? All that knowledge. All that knowledge. Um, <laughs> an answer is what we need, so... Are you... Go now. Just a minute. Are what? you doing me again? I'm, I'm flirting round the edges of you, Terry. <laughs> Careful, I'll set fire to you. Right. Um, right, what are you going to say then? What are you, tr truth or lie? Sounds plausible. Young guy, read a few comics, read the Bible, melted the two in his head and formed the guy bite. Wow. It's like having Inspector Frost in the studio Sounds with us. <laughs> um, what about you, Katie? Which way are you leaning? Well, I think he clearly has a wonderful imagination. That's clear. Mm. So I think, yes, it's true. OK. I will say it's true. You're going to say true? OK. Robert Webb. Truth or lie? It is a true thing. <laughs> yes, it was all true. Uh, when Robert was a child, he did form an imaginary gang from his many imaginary friends. You know, it may seem odd, but loads of people have tons of imaginary friends. It's called being on Facebook. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Lee's team have two. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Tony. <laughs> Right, uh, Kevin, we'll start with you. What is your relationship with Tony? Uh, this is my mate, Tony. We were once questioned by the police for stealing a life-size cardboard cutout of Hugh Grant. <laughs> Katie, how do you know uh, Tony? This is Tony, and he um, freed me from a vending machine when I got my foot stuck in the push compartment. <laughs> Finally, Lee, how do you know Tony? This is Tony, and until today, I had never met this man before, but the person that was supposed to be doing this tonight didn't turn up. So I grabbed the first person I saw outside the studio. <laughs> so there we have it. Kevin's partner in crime, Katie's snack machine <coughs> saviour, or, or Lee's stand-in man. Right, David, off you go. Well, Lee's one is quite difficult to cross-examine, isn't it? <laughs> so essentially what Lee's saying is, here's Tony, he's a random bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but who was supposed to come, Lee? Well, had it gone to plan today, I would have said, this is Graham, and he's my self-defence instructor, because I'm learning self-defence. Right. <laughs> what happened to Graham? Did he get beaten up? <laughs> the story I am told is that he hurt his arm this morning, during a self-defence class, and then, very late in the day, he got in the car to come here and had some turn because of the painkillers he was on and cancelled and said, I can't come. That's a sad old story, yeah. 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 <laughs> so what was Tony doing here before you found him? Uh, he's uh, a joiner, which uh, well, is somebody yeah. that puts wood together. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want you thinking he was somebody that just randomly just, joined clubs. He's just <laughs> a very sensible guy. Yeah. I'm a joiner. What are you doing? I'm going to join a club. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 yeah, OK. <laughs> where, where were you in the, in the complex? Well, I'm not sure how good this is for national television, but I'll tell you, David. <laughs> I was just outside that door where some people go out for a cigarette. I think, I think you're aware of that door, David. I'm aware of the I'm door. sorry if David's parents are watching to break the news like this. <laughs> David I occasionally yeah. does that. Yeah. And I'm not talking cigarettes either. No. <laughs> to, to me, it will always be the heroin door. <laughs> what sort of incentive did you offer this good man to come here and make a complete numpty of himself? Well, well, well answer the man, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> The rejected chuckle brother has got the better of me again. <laughs> OK, well, I mean, I must say, yeah. Lee's story is incredibly plausible. It's, and incredibly tedious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, um, I, that's why it rings so true. 
Kevin. Your partner in crime. What, what did this man do with you? Um, I think crime's a strong word, Terry, from a man who has got arson in his past. <laughs> we were questioned by the police, not charged out, and just questioned for stealing a life-size cardboard cut of Hugh Grant. <laughs> what, did you, what were you going to do with Hugh Grant? We'd went to a blockbuster video, and none, nothing really caught my eye, except the life-size cardboard cut of Hugh Grant. What? <laughs> I, I, sorry, I didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> we went to a blockbuster video, OK? <laughs> Nothing is what I like, Terry. Finally, he's talking normal. Exactly. <laughs> we it did shows it to every Scottish right. person if you just made a little bit of effort. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I saw the scene of life size cut, cut to your grant on the way out. It was threatening to be a pretty dull evening until we seen this, and we thought we'll steal this and have a laugh on the way back home. And we were walking home. A police car pulled up and said, "Where are you going with, with Hugh Grant, lads?" <laughs> this guy could not see the funny side at all, and decided to put him in the passenger seat, put us two in the back, and drive. <laughs> and drive us to the police station to be questioned. We haven't touched on Katie yet. No, we oh. haven't. Um, yes, you've been told about that, Terry. We told you quite clearly before we started. Yeah. Where was the vending machine? It was at Cardiff Central train station. What, what did the vending machine vend? <laughs> My... What is this thing you call love, human? <laughs> what does it vend? It vended the normal stuff, drinks, chocolate bars. What were you doing with your foot <clears> in the vending machine? Well, I put the money in. Yeah. And the, I was trying to get a drink, and I could see that it come out a bit, but not properly. Yeah. And after trying to get out with my hands, I tried my foot. <laughs> and it got stuck? Yes. Oh. But is it, was it a little hole or a big slot? It was like a tray thing. And how did, how did this fine man help you? He was working at the train station. Yeah. And he's clocked it and came along and said, do you want a hand? And you said, <laughs> we must keep in touch? <laughs> We didn't stay in touch, but I knew how to find him. How, how did you because find him? Because he's still working at Cardiff train station, Cardiff Central. Mm. But what I don't understand, right, the, the thing's on. fallen down. Yes. And you, you're having difficulty getting it out with your hand. Now, Correct. hands are basically better than feet. Yes. <laughs> sort of I, I, I wonder why you sort that. of think, if the hand can't do it, why is the foot going to develop the knack? No, my logic was... I tried with the hands, and I thought, sort of, a kick, brute force, ah. you know, might work instead. That was, was the logic. Was it the sort of door? You know, because often the, the slot at the bottom has got a sort of door. Hasn't yes, it, it had I a door. I offered slot, and she called it a tray. Yeah. <laughs> then it's not a tray, is it? It's not a tray. A tray would be <laughs> removable. <laughs> this is like good cop, guy by cop. <laughs> How did he release the foot? What exactly did he do? He had a key to open the front bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you just went back and... Whoa! Yes, yes. Uh, well, what do you think is the most plausible story, then, Terry? Do you think it's...? I think, and once again, I may be putting my faith, as indeed I have throughout my life, in a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you believe Katie? He looks Welsh. <laughs> I think Lee or Kevin, I, I'm having some ah, difficulty. I need some consensus. I'm having trouble picturing the foot lodged in the tray. Are you, are you, so you're, if you're saying you're going towards Lee, you, you have to then accept that he is having self-defence lessons. Oh, okay. um, well, that's a good point. Because yeah. if, you know, you, <laughs> why are you getting self-defence lessons? <laughs> well, because my, my wife uh, decided to take self-defence lessons. And she said, she asked me to come with her. We have private lessons, and she, he comes round to the apps. I, I wasn't oh. expecting it, but it was no. on the NHS. I'm throwing money at the problem. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say, then, chaps? Mm. Is Tony Kevin's Hugh Grant thief? Gosh, crikey, crikey, gosh. <laughs> Katie's vending machine hero, or Lee's last resort? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, dear. I think maybe... I think maybe... Kevin, Ke Kevin. I think I'll go for Kevin. And you think it's Katie? I don't know. So I'm going to say we think it's Katie. Okay. Um, Tony, 
Would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Tony, and me and Kevin did steal a life-size shoe grant for out. <laughs> Were there any charges? No, it was a caution. And you're proud of it, aren't you? I can see the... <laughs> There's a real pride in your face. You feel you should have a Duke of Edinburgh award, don't you? <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. We will start with... It's David Mitchell. When I was 12, I saved up all my pocket money and bought a rowing boat that I never used. <laughs> Three. Right. Um, how Ooh. much was the boat? <clears throat> I think it was about £120. Oh, really? How much did you make pocket money a week? Oh, two grand, something like that. <laughs> I, I can't remember, but I think it would be something like one pound. Whoa, 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 whoa. You earned a pound a week, pocket money. Yeah. The boat was £120. Yeah. You know, I had the occasional windfall. Christmas. What's the windfall? Christmas, oh, Christmas, Christmas what, like, and birthdays. The lottery. Christmas and birthdays and the other festival uh, only our family did. Oh. <laughs> Where were you planning to go in this boat? Um, I planned to sort of row, row around in it when on holiday. And I how was. did you propose to get it on holiday? You had your eye on a nice Ford Fiesta with a tow bar. <laughs> you know, at that age, I would often holiday with my parents. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's like holiday with yeah, this year? Yeah. Parents! <laughs> Come yeah, here. I've gone this year well before. Parents, I've got a proposal for you. <laughs> <laughs> and what stopped the plan? The, um... Basically, the boat was a bit too big. Oh. A bit too big for, for what? what? The sea? <laughs> Pushed it into the water and kept hitting France. So easy. Can't, can't get it into the. Try it sideways, Dick! Where did you keep it? Uh, it was, I think, in our front garden. You think? Yeah. Did you ever sit in the boat in the front <laughs> garden? <laughs> well, pretending. Yeah. Well, with a knotted hanky. <laughs> so, I which way are you going to go with it? Truth or lie? What do we think, Katie? I... I sort of, yeah, I think it's true. Hey, I'm going to go for a... I'm going to go for a lie. I would say that it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. OK. David, truth or lie? It is true. Oh! <laughs> yes, it's true. When David was 12, he did spend all his pocket money on a rowing boat that he never used. Interestingly, David is one of the few people to own a boat they can never use who hasn't been a contestant on Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <coughs> it's Lee. After an incident with a permanent marker, I had to go to my son's parents' evening with a moustache and glasses drawn <laughs> on my face. <laughs> David's team, do you believe that? OK. Who, who drew this on your face, or did you do it to yourself? Yes. I did it to myself. I was on the way to my son's parents' evening, and thinking, I haven't got a tie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, I'll pretend I'm somebody okay. else instead. <laughs> All right, what, what happened? I was asleep one afternoon. My wife thought it would be funny if my son drew the thing on the face. So she said, go and get one of your felts, because the felts are, you know, the, wash, the, the washable ones. He started drawing on my face. I woke up, I laughed a bit, I let him carry on, and then we looked at the pen, <laughs> realised it was permanent marker. <laughs> and when I went to wash it off, it, 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 it came off a bit, but not enough. And we were late, so we just had to go. <laughs> can't, you, can't you try, I don't know, white spirit or something? Doesn't, doesn't that yeah, work? I could have tried a blowtorch as well. <laughs> I mean, silly, silly bang. <laughs> what sort of moustache was it? Was it a sort of twirly one? Or just a sort of more Hitler-type thing? Or... <laughs> Couldn't go into your son's school in it with a Hitler. Wow. Well, <laughs> could you? Well, you definitely couldn't, David. Yeah. That, would, that would be wrong. <laughs> so, David, which way? Well, I think... We, you think it's a lie? Yeah. You think it's a lie? We're going to say it's You're a lie. You're going to say it's yes. a lie. OK, Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Ooh. Ah, yeah, true. <laughs> it's a lie. Lee didn't go to his son's parents' evening with a moustache and glasses drawn on his face. Next. 
Uh, Terry. Every year, I signal the start of Christmas dinner by taking my seat opposite Mrs. Wogan and firing a pistol loaded <laughs> with a blank or blanks. I've always wanted to say this is like a dream come true. Is it the current Mrs. Wogan? Yes, the poor soul. Have you ever, have you ever set fire to her? In ways that I will not. <laughs> okay, so where did you get this pistol from? I have a gun license. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> So whatever questions you like, so tell And I wouldn't be afraid to use it. <laughs> These are blanks. It's a simple... It's a simple tradition. How did it start, tradition? Eight, well, years ago. Uh, my father did it before me. Why did he Until do the it? accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, things, you know, develop in families, little traditions. The fun starts in the Wogan household with... A pistol shot. <laughs> it's a bit frightening at first for the grandchildren, but, <laughs> but they get over it. So and they you... know that it's the beginning of the great festival that, that Grandad <laughs> has fired his pistol. <laughs> Time to get the bird out. Right, Lee. Kevin, what do we think? Um, I think it's a lie. Kevin's saying a lie. Kevin's Katie, a lie. What are you Katie. saying? It just seems a very dangerous thing to do with your family around. I, I think it's a lie. You say a lie? I say it's a you lie. say it's a lie. Terry, is it true or is it a lie? Ha <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. A Terry does not signal the start of Christmas dinner by firing a pistol loaded with a blank or blanks. Although Terry does have a strict Christmas dinner routine, uh, he asks Mrs. Wogan if she wants stuffing, and then two hours later they enjoy a cold lunch. <laughs> oh, well, that noise uh, signals time's up, and it's the end of the show. And I can reveal that in an exciting finish, David's team have won by six points to three. But, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Sir Terry Wogan. Hey. Thank you. Yes, Sir Terry Wogan, who's, who's such an unscrupulous liar, he makes Eurovision voting look above board. Good night. <laughs>